Hello, I'm Dr. Arnash Kordi. I'm an internist and nephrologist. Uh, here I want to uh, present some different topics about um, the kidney, including its anatomy and physiology. After that, I proceed to pathophysiology, which means the mechanism of the diseases of the kidney. After that, I will explain something about symptoms and signs of the major renal diseases by which a patient may refer to you. Uh, after each discussion, I try to present some major clinical applications which you may find it useful during your clinical encounters. Uh, my discussions are mostly oriented towards medical students uh, and physicians, uh, but other healthcare professionals may also find them useful. Uh, in the first session, I begin to describe some major issues about renal anatomy. Sorry, I don't know what is this. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, after this session about the anatomy, you should be able to describe gross anatomy of the kidney, the structure of the nephron, uh, major components of glomerulus and tubules, anatomy of macular densa. These are some uh, education objectives of this session. And the next three objectives five, six, and seven are about the renal physiology, which is the title of our next sessions. As you can see, kidney is a bean-shaped organ located behind the peritoneum, behind the parietal peritoneum. So it's called as an as a retro peritoneal organ. Retro means behind. Mostly we have two kidneys in very rare cases. Some may have more than two which is a normal variation. Uh, as you can see, the right kidney is a bit lower than the left one. This is the right side and this is the left side because of the presence of liver about the right kidney. The right kidney will be pushed down a little bit more than the left one. These two organs are located alongside the spinal column, which is not shown here. From T11 and the elements thoracic vertebra to 
L2 or L3 means the second and third lumbar vertebra. Uh, each kidney has a weight of about 100 to 110 gram with a length of about 12 centimeters in an adult person and with a width of about 6 centimeters and with a thickness of about 3 centimeters. If the length of the kidney is less than 12 centimeters, sorry, less than 9 centi centimeters in an adult person, it's a major sign of chronic kidney disease. In chronic kidney disease, the length of kidney is reduced mostly to less than 9 centimeters. Beside the kidney, well, we have two major vessels. This is abdominal aorta, which left and right renal arteries originate from it. As you can see, the right renal artery is longer than the left one. The right renal artery is not shown here, only you can see the end part of it here. This is a major vein in the body, inferior and a cava. Right and left renal veins are drained into inferior vena cava. As you see, left renal vein is between superior mesenteric artery here and abdominal aorta here. This is left renal vein. This is superior mesenteric artery, and this is abdominal aorta. This special position has a clinical implication. Sometimes this vein is compressed between these two arteries and it can cause pain in the loin area and the passage of blood in the urine which is called maturia. This is a very rare cause of maturia and it's called as nutcracker syndrome. A tube shaped structure is attached to each kidney here and here. These are called ureter and they drain urine from kidneys into the urinary bladder. In this slide, you can see the cross section of the kidney and gross anatomy of it. You can see these structures without the microscope. Each kidney has a capsule which surrounds it. If this capsule is stretched, it can cause severe pain because 
it has nerve endings. So the major cause of pain in some of the renal diseases is stretching this capsule. There is an outer layer which is called as cortex and inner layer which is called as medulla. Medulla is striated. It has some vertical lines as you can see and these lines are collecting ducts which we will describe them later. Some extensions of cortex are located between the medulla. These extensions are called as renal columns of Bertin. Sometimes these columns are enlarged and it may be confused with tumors. It's called as hypertrophy of columns of Bertin, which is a normal anatomical variation. Each of these medullary structures, which are striated, is called as a pyramid because as you can see it has a shape like a pyramid with its base located toward the cortex and its apex located toward the inner part of the kidney. Here here, here, and all of these are renal pyramids. The apex of each renal pyramid is called as papillae. So papillae is the apex or the apical part of each of these renal pyramids. As you can see, each of these papillae is surrounded by a funnel shaped structure. This is called as minor callus. The formed urine is drained from collecting ducts which are presented by these vertical lines into this funnel shaped structure which as I said is called as minor callus. These minor calluses attach to each other to form three major calluses one two and three this is located in the upper pole of the kidney this is in the middle pole and this is in the lower pole and these three major calluses again attach to each other to form this structure which is called as renal pelvis and renal pelvis in turn is attached to ureter which we have seen it in the previous slide and as I've mentioned before it is a tube shaped structure which drains urine into the urinary bladder. So all of these structures, including minor and major calluses, 
renal pelvis and ureter are formed to collect and to direct urine from the kidney into the urinary bladder. Here you can see renal artery which originates from abdominal aorta, enters the kidney and divides into three major branches. One goes toward the upper pole, one towards the middle, and one towards the lower pole. And each of these major branches again form some other minor branches which penetrates into the columns of Bertrand. This is the renal vein which drain drains the venous blood from the kidney into the inferior renal cava. In these two slides we had a very concise review on the major issues about gross anatomy of the kidney. In the next session we will continue this topic and uh, we will discuss about the microscopic anatomy of the kidney. Thank you.